Ladies and gentlemen, our last presentation before our lunch break is Baby Castles, presented to you by Kunal Gupta and Syed Salahuddin. Please welcome. Context for games like a, a, a space to bring these out, <coughs> these face to face. <laughs> can't hear them in the back, so you know. uh, these like face to face engagements with games in a way that um, I think most people hadn't been used to for a while, but it is part of a lot of other punk ethics and, and music culture. So, <coughs> in, in a kind of medium that people have been used to gauging by metrics and, uh, and uh, just like producing work and, and as, a, as, a, as a machine, as like a part of a uh, like a publishing industry, um, people hadn't really gotten used to the community feedback and the art, the art aspect of it, the part of being part of a culture and of the, of the city. And so, Baby Castles not only has um, engaged with first-time participators in games, but we also have been some of the first few times that uh, some of the bigger, so like Adam Saltzman, who made Cannonball and Flixel and stuff, uh, Ben Afadi, who, who I guess started with Quack, but he's he's just been on a roll. He's he's part of the Sports Friends team. Um, a lot of these people's first talks, these first audiences, was built at a, at a, as a, at a games venue, um, which is Baby Castle's first incarnation. And uh, one of our most, like, I think successful um, uh, curations was a curation by Ivan Safran called God Bless Baby Castles. Um, it was basically a, a curation of Christian games. Um, it started off kind of as a joke but turned into something way more meaningful and serious. Um, these were some of the games. These were uh, a bunch of games that were made for uh, Christian audiences, and they were either hacks or modified from current um, game engines or made brand new game engines. Um, uh, Matt Dickey uh, made, a, made a game about uh, Jesus' life, and um, it was based off of one of his games that was uh, a wrestling engine. So. Um, uh, one of the purposes of, uh, of, of the game was to not wrestle people down, and you can still do all the moves that you could in, in a wrestling game, but you're supposed to be passive. Um, another another um, company, Wisdom Tree, actually got a piece of software, um, this this um, engine called the, the Wolfenstein engine from it, its software. It was a, primarily a, um, a game to, to shoot people. It's based off of it's like one of the first first-person shooters, 3D first-person shooters, and um, they uh, they received IP from from it because it was uh, mad at Nintendo for some reason, and they made a hacked version of of Wolfenstein 3D that that uh, they incorporated uh, Noah, and it was called Super Noah's Ark 3D, where instead of killing Nazis, you're just knocking um, animals down. Yeah. Um, and you're not killing, yeah, they're just, you need to get, they're angry at you for some reason. Actually, oh, yeah. there's this, uh, there's a couple things you missed, but like, uh, I actually don't have 
have enough context exactly, but Wisdom Tree and Abdiki were two of the game developers here. And what was interesting was um, just trying to use this kind of cultural, like bring out the artist, bring out the game developer into the into conversation, face to face engagements and stuff, and, and kind of, and set that up for old companies like Wisdom Tree, who who had just who had been in opposition. They were like a, they were exactly an oppositional game. Uh, Super Noah's Arc 3D, I believe it's called exactly. Uh, was that was the only Super Nintendo game that wasn't allowed to be published by Nintendo, but still sold because Christian game stores, sold, uh, Christian like bookstores, sold it as a product instead, <clears throat> which didn't need to deal with Nintendo otherwise. So these were uh, to, they were kind of stuck. These these artists were stuck without a, without a voice. So um, I don't know if you want to talk about MD. Uh, well, M. Dickey made the the wrestling game, and and this is a question from one of his one his one of his interviews, um, and. And what's really amazing is that he, he uh, people still don't know if he made the game as a joke or if it was a sincere uh, game about religion. And um, I love this answer, I'm just gonna read it out. I'm not aware of any mainstream games that depict God or Christianity. As far as games are concerned, God is just sort of kind of for power and control. There's no, nothing sincere or philosophical about it. Um, that's why I was so excited about making the U Testament and games in that vein. It explicitly and directly tackles these huge issues. It uses a childish format, uh, format to ask adult questions. And uh, in addition, what was interesting about this Christian Games exhibition was that um, it was a really interesting door to open to, to the neighborhood around us. This, this whole place, uh, Baby Castles, took place in deep Brooklyn, Queens, kind of on the border, surrounded by churches and youth groups related to churches, etc. And, and we had a lot of kinds of art programming going on before, but it was scary. It was scary if you're not involved in a culture already, like a, a particular music scene won't necessarily open the door, even if you, even if you like put a sign out on your door and say, come in, it's still, there's still a cultural barrier. But all that kind of dropped with the Christian Games exhibition. It was incredible. Um, because we were able to go around and invite our neighbors in uh, using both, like two huge, two huge words, which is like their religion, their faith, and also uh, games. And, and that, was, that, was, that was kind of a big deal to understand that in fact games are the most pervasive medium right now. It's the thing that, it's like a handshake that makes a lot of sense uh, because in fact games are very welcoming. And, and that, that exhibition sort of adjusted our mission statement. Uh, and that leads us to the Museum of Natural History. So uh, about two years ago, um, so that was a time that was, that was an earlier time in Baby Castles, about five years ago. Um, and then two years ago, I did a talk. Um, uh, I did a talk at Games for Change. Um, I had a bike accident, came on stage bloody, and did this like really impassioned talk. And, and I got the attention of Ruth Cohen from the Museum of Natural History. She was like, you should, you should do something here. Uh, and I'm like, OK. So they were like, well, we have a dome. And I wasn't sure if they have multiple domes there or if they were talking about the Hayden Planetarium, but they were talking about the Hayden Planetarium. So us and uh, Ivan Safran created one of the first uh, infant video games for, um, for this dome, this military spec dome um, that's only been actually used for flight simulators. And um, it's called Space Cruiser. It's basically you're, you're running around in a spaceship, you're avoiding asteroids, and the end state is to warp into another galaxy. And um, you're, you're actually collaboratively, cooperatively <laughs> uh, operating the ship uh, by changing the direction uh, between three, three players. Um, so and that's, that's one of the, the end states. That's something at the World Science Festival that we did with uh, just a, a ton of children uh, one day. Um, so uh, I don't know, we've just, since Christian Games the Christian Games exhibition about the first few months we were ever open, uh, we've become this, uh, we've, had, we've sort of grown a little bit in, in, in a position in games where we get a lot of interesting gigs and a lot of funding for all sorts of bigger projects, which is actually, uh, just expands upon the hello, the, the power of games right now, because we, we end up in a lot of civic or public institutions using games as a way to bring a lot of people in. In fact, I just came back from the Maldives uh, uh, where I was taking part uh, in a big public art exhibition, which sort of only worked because we called it games. So there's a whole there's a whole military uh, overthrowing structure. There's a weird government in place, very confusing. But somehow they all kind of shook hands over the word games, and we were able to do one of the first public art exhibitions in this country. 
uh, uh, you know, just leveraging the, the welcomeness of the welcomingness of games. It's, it's there's just so many with all this with all this uh, power. There's just so much so many like uh, crazy doors to open. Fifteen seconds, but we might go over a little bit. And um, one of the things we wanted to talk about, speaking of the Maldives being a, a Muslim country, we also have. Um, oh, we're just going to skip that. Um, we made this. Uh, we had this idea a few uh, a few weeks ago of, of creating a curation of Islamic games called Islamic uh, Islamic of Baby Castles. Um, one of the reasons why we why what got us so excited about this was one we were reminiscing about uh, God bless Baby Castles and how it's a curation of Christian games and how you know uh, there's actually a space for Islamic games now. Um, in, in the games world, and it has, they haven't been shown in the context of an arcade. Um, and they're just kind of in in the same stride of our mission statement. They're oppositional to the mainstream, uh, mainstream game movement, even even oppositional to the indie games movement. You know, um, they're completely obscure on the fringe, but really, really interesting. And and one of our missions is to be hyper-exclusive and to build this, this bridge, yeah. Um, this is this is uh, this is actually an advertisement for one of the games of uh, uh, teaching uh, young Muslim children on how to how to pray, um, and you can see it's like it's like a three D three D game. Um, and uh, another game that's like really interesting that's in that space is called Quraysh. It's created by a Syrian company. Uh, it's a real time strategy game that takes place in pre Islamic and Islamic periods, and it deals uh, with the origin and spread of Islam. Um, it allows players to control four different nations, Pagan, Bedouins, Muslim Arabs, Zoroastrians, uh, per, uh, Persians, and Christian Romans. Um, and you get immersed in this, this real-time strategy of like, you know, how in the very origin stories of uh, Islam and how it spread throughout those nations. I guess I'll just skip that. <clears throat> part, of our, part of our mission has been to bring, um, to bring a, game developers back from, there's a few high level, there's been a lot of entry level participation in games that's expanded through due to projects like Baby Castles and other like, uh, places to display work where friends come and see it, talk about it, and engage with it. Um, and, and it just starts to become really like face to face meaningful. We've seen a lot more kinds of voices in games, but there's also this other kind of aspect going on which is unexplored, which is what happens with higher level uh, you know, high value, lots of conversation going up about them. Game designers, game designers who've actually kind of made it in the public eye, are suddenly don't really have a use for uh, an entry level games infrastructure, and they're back to engaging with publishing houses and metrics and iTunes sales and, and Sony deals, and and that's they're just, they're just back into the world of a studio that they probably left to pursue independent games. So <clears throat> we're trying to create a system that's an alternative. Uh, we're trying to. We've been doing that for the beginning, uh, for the for the entry level participants. We're trying to bring them back into uh, into art, and we're trying to. Part of our mission is to bring these game developers to keep ex uh, experimenting with uh, like the meaning of their huge cultural ability, the fact that everybody cares about games, collaborating with other city artists, sculptors, curators, musicians, uh, and and recontextualizing their work um, to be pervasively accessible and kind of, and, and be like a either somewhere between a public curiosity or even cultural landmark. Um, we just want to make this really fun for game designers. That's it. Are there any questions?